couple of reviews to to will be the theme for tonight and whatever else I feel like blathering about. Um, firstly, before I start, I should inform you I found Simon Webb's brother from another mother who will be featuring in the next video. I'll be hoping to reunite this fa the family. In any case, for those not familiar with the term of outsider art, it's generally considered as art created by people who don't have any formal training and who sometimes create art almost compulsively. The BBC had a particular article today about a particular artist like this that interested me. And when Zoom moves that stupid bar out of the way, thank you, uh, we'll have a look at this. This is from Historic England, which it was focusing on this. Birkenhead's hidden gem of outsider art, Ron's Place, newly listed. A hidden gem of outsider art, Ron's Place. Sounds like a cafe, actually. <laughs> you expect to walk in and ask for two egg and chip or something. In there, located at Aid Silverdale Road in Birkenhead, Merseyside has been granted Grade 2 listing by the Department for Culture, Media and Sport, DCMS, on the advice of Historic London, England. Could someone at some point in some government department invent a government department for cutting down acronyms? It would be lovely. Concealed for over 30 years within an unassuming Victorian semi-detached villa, Ron Gittens um, meticulously crafted a striking visionary environment which remained a secret until he died in 2019. Now, inside this just average-looking sort of semi-detached house, you're going to find a fascinating world of, well, let it speak for itself, I think. Here's uh, the hallway. The Egyptian-themed hallway at um, Ron's place. I don't probably uh, probably have to walk around and ask Nefertiti for the fish, fish and chips around there or something. It gets better. Um, now this is fascinating because I'm not sure whether I consider outsider art, art or not because it raises a question of what is art? Is it just people who are formally trained as artists or or? It raises a question of snobbery about art. I'm sure Ron considered this art to some degree. He wouldn't spend 33 years making this. I also have to ask, um, Ron must have spent a heck of a lot of time doing this, as you'll see with the next pictures. Ron died at age 79 and spent from age 46 or so till very near his death making this stuff. That implies a heck of a lot of commitment, and Ron must have spent a heck of a lot of time doing this. And apparently very few people ever saw it. It's slightly eccentric. Here's um, another one. Um, I suppose you could call it a minotaur as such. Certainly it's inspired by that to some extent, I would think, with that funky, funky chair. Oh, that dead baby doll there looks a bit um, ever so slightly creepy. I didn't notice that before in one of the photos. Another view of the same thing. The bull's probably shouting for its egg and chips. I imagine, yes, I'm going to keep doing crappy jokes about egg and chips and sausage chips throughout this. But viewers to the channel should know by now have a penchant for really crappy jokes. Um, then you have this rather strange sort of amateurish sort of mural going on here, which seems to partake of Crete and iconography mixed up with other bits of ancient Greek for um, stuff. Um, what have we got next? Um, Ron's sitting room, which looks quite interesting. Um, uh, an Oxfam by uh, Brigham by shop combined with some interesting pictures. I will say that's one of the few CR tellies I've seen in years. I haven't seen a CR telly, old-fashioned telly like that in a long time. I, the last time I saw one before that was... Well, actually, I, t I do tell a bit of a lie there. For some strange reason, there's one Chinese shop I passed with the West End a few weeks ago which seems to have one, but they don't seem to be using it. They just seem to be using it to block the window to stop people looking in. Um, Ron's rather interesting marble effect fireplace... The rather lovely, um, cheap copy Stratocaster there, which I think it's... I can't see the name on it. It looks like Encore, which is 
a very common brand for copy stretch classes. Could be Core, could be any number of uh, another brands where they make cheap 50 to 100 pound 120 pound structure caster copies um and that lovely pile of old stereo stuff in there never know some of that might actually be worth some stuff depending on what it is um you've also got that bra hanging out of the of the drawer i don't know if ron's deliberately posed that or it's just untidiness who knows ron may have actually Arrange this since Ron's not around to ask. We can't know anymore. Um, let's see what we've got else. Another view of the same scene. Let's zoom in. Oh, look, another CRT telly. Could almost do a museum of, of you know, extinct tellies with Ron's house, and it would seem. Um, another lovely chair. Some lovely pictures of um, figures. There's something slightly uncanny valley about these pictures, especially that one on the left. There's a real uncanny valley feeling about that picture. It gives me a real odd vibe looking at it. Uh, Ron's mural on the ceiling, which looks like, I don't know what we're going for here. Paul Gagoyne meets, meets ancient Greece, gone slightly wrong. Uh, but then again, I shouldn't laugh. Because uh, that's the laugh of a snob. Art doesn't just belong to people who've been to art colleges. And for, and for Ron, it was actually obviously something important to him. I'm not sure if that's meant to be Henry VIII or a, a riff on Holbein's ambassadors or what's going on on that wall there. Gosh knows. Um, obviously, we've got a, a Tyreme there, it looks like. I will say I quite like the blue that he's done there. That's uh, a quite a nice deep blue he's done up there. And he worked on that bit and probably cut that this image out. I think he could have actually done something uh, a bit more compositionally nice up there. He could have actually got something out of that one. Um, and another room in Ron's house. With Ron seems to have a fascination with these strange dolls in st states of disarray. I can think of a few artists who do that, actually. And this kind of colour matching and clashing reminds me of periods in Klimt's work where he did stuff like that. Yes, I'm going to go pretentious on you at this point. Um, this lion, that must have taken a heck of a lot of work, I will say. Um, this kind of panelled freeze up here. I mean, I can't believe no one saw this at all for 33 years. Did no, no one come around and do a bit of repair work or... I mean, the man was 79 when he died, so he was getting on a bit. Nobody check on his welfare, check if, if Ron was feeling okay, or come and say, you're okay, Ron, you, you need to go to a hospital appointment or anything. If so, that says some, something far more horrid about our society than the fact that Ron was doing a bit of mucking about on walls. After all, this is, since Ron rented it, it's, you know, effectively up to Ron if he wants to do it. Um... Ron's Minotaur and back round again. Let's get back out of that. Um, this is from the a comment from the director of the 20th Century Society. Let's move myself. That sounds very meta. This is 20th Century Heritage, unlike any other first example of outsider art to be nationally listed. The ground floor flat on Silverdale Road was rented by Rod in 1986, and he spent the next three decades creating a visionary empowerment. With limited formal artistic training, he would often wear his costumes when out in the local area, but he kept the creations with his home for own appreciation, with, custom, with visitors largely discouraged. I found this it's absolutely fascinating. If it's, even if it's not what you'd call and the term is, again, debatable great art here's ron's bathroom which they didn't show up further i really do hope for ron's sake mind you that that was not in the bath during ron's life and he could take a a wash and that and he wasn't reduced to sort of just washing himself at the sink or something and having a a jimmy in there and that was his whole sanitary arrangements i would hope that was not the case you can see an art, some other articles on it here from the Guardian, where there was an article that's going back a bit where there was a drive to save a, a Ron's place. 
which obviously they've managed to do now. I've also put in an article about outsider art where it gives you some examples of it. And people who are famous outside are artists and people like that. It would be all too easy to dismiss it as just silly r- rubbish, but I don't think that's absolutely where I'd go with it. Oh, and as a closing bit, since now the picture I showed it, this is another kind of strange fireplace that Ron has done, which seems to partake of some of the, some of the notions of a fireplace from the Middle Ages, since it's got Crusader knight motifs there, and what and Cecilia written there. This is Ron himself. I mean, we uh, he seems to be a great Britain to be a great British eccentric from a country that's always produced a large number of eccentrics. And if so, a totally harmless eccentric. What's Ron done here after all? Done some crazy drawings on walls and some quite eccentric doodlings and and faces and built them up a, a, across a wall. I wouldn't mind going and seeing it, in fact, and just walking around it for curiosity's sake. <laughs>